want to share with you some of what we're just beginning to know about touch as an important health measure and means of communication and why most of us can only reach out and touch a very few people in a very few ways. Here in the richest country in the world, our richest sense, the sense of touch, is rigidly suppressed by a set of unspoken taboos. We're just beginning to acknowledge people's need, their hunger for loving, caring touch that is affirming, relaxing, and healing, especially touch that makes no demands for the sexual satisfaction of the toucher. Touch is the first of the senses to develop in the fetus and the predominant sense in the newborn. When a child is born, all sensations, all information, come to it through its skin, the largest organ of the human body. Although all of our children are born with a need to be touched, how a child is touched in this culture depends on its sex. Very soon after birth, mothers and fathers both begin to touch boy babies less often and in fewer ways than girl babies. Thus begins a system of socialization which teaches our boys and girls two completely different ways of touching and perceiving their bodies. In this culture, the majority of expectant parents, particularly if they're expecting their first child, say they would rather have a boy than a girl. So even before birth, certain expectations are formed based on sex. In general, boys are expected to be brave, independent, strong, and ready to explore their world, so we do not bind them to us with touch. Girls are raised not to be nearly so independent, brave, and strong, so we bind them to us with touch to keep them safe. Generally, boys are jostled, bumped, and tossed about. Girls are more likely to be stroked, caressed, and cuddled. When a boy is born, he is seen as having a sexual future. His genitals are visible and not easily denied. His sexuality is generally encouraged in many subtle ways. He's his father's son, all right. Every day as they grow, boys think about, touch, go public with their genitals. They urinate in urinals, they swim nude, they take group showers. A sixth grade boy said to me one day, why do they call them my privates? Everyone knows I have them. And I said, that's right. You have publics. Girls have privates. <laughs> During toilet training, boys are encouraged to concentrate on what they're doing, to hold, be aware of their penis. Most adults do not want girls to touch, look at, talk about the genitals we will later expect her to think about, take responsibility for. I see London, I see Prince. We see also London. teach girls that their genitals are hidden, unlovely, smell, and are unclean. And we do this in many ways. One of the ways is in that total barrage of advertising for the endless numbers of perfumes, disinfectants, douches for the genitals. And then we tell the girl that that's the part of you that you save for the one you love. Then the boys with publics and the girls with privates socialized in two different ways of touching, perceiving, accepting their bodies are told. If you find the right person to love, Intimacy and sexual expression are easy, natural. Now go out and find that one right person and live happily ever after. What do you want from me, Nancy? All I'm asking is for you to be a little bit more tender with me, Mike. Does everything have to be sexual with you? I mean, can't you ever just touch me gently? What do you mean? I touch you all the time. You grab me. I